got to the point where at one point I had put a regular H22 back in it with a regular head configuration just so I had something to drive because I was I was going through so many parts and making so many mistakes and I finally just said screw it I'm just going to shelve this whole idea mm -hmm. and I ran into I think it was John Park over at RC Engineering while I was picking up some injectors and I told him what I was doing and he said dude look, let's give it another shot and I said dude you've lost your mind man he goes no 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 I'm not going to let you quit so he actually showed up and stayed with me until about one or two in the morning, assembling one more engine with the head flipped around on it and running clearances with the VTEC engaged so we could make sure that it was done right. And um, I yanked the pistons out and I took them over to Velios Machine Shop. And Harry over there, he machined the pistons exactly how I said to machine them and I put it back together. And this time I took it out and pushed it hard. Mm. Uh, hit the VTEC real hard, you know, I was zooming around on the freeway real really early in the morning so there'd be no traffic and trying to blow the engine and it would not blow and, <laughs> <laughs> and i figured if it's going to do it it's going to do it under, it's going to do it you know when under I my own to. power yeah. exactly it's not going to wait until i'm on a road trip somewhere so. <laughs> Alrighty, everyone. Welcome back to Unmoto Anatomy. Today I have Tommy. Sir, thank you for making the time for us, man. This is going to be super exciting. Uh, so tell us, what do you drive? I drive a 95 Honda Odyssey. Okay. And it's, go ahead. It's converted to stick shift. It has an H22 engine with throttle bodies from TWM and a lot of homemade stuff in it. So <laughs> Definitely a lot of homemade stuff. Yeah. So take us back. Um, how long have you owned the car for and where did you pick it up from? Um, well, this van body I've only owned for about two years, but the original one before the final, the whole swap process began, um, I bought back in, I want to say 2010. And I got it from a, a young man in Orange County. I can't remember his name, but I found out that the van had quite a bit of history to it because one of the famous racers from the 90s was turbocharging it and racing it at uh, Palmdale. Wow. And um, it was pretty old, worn out when I got it. The turbo wasn't in anymore, it had an old, worn out H22. I think I paid eight hundred dollars for the whole van, and um, in the end, it barely made it home. But when it did, the first thing it did was tear it apart, <laughs> with the intent to make it stock and flip it and get my money back. Really? So what happened? Uh, like most cars, I had a real bad idea to try to make it faster. <laughs> so <laughs> thought maybe I could take something that some little Japanese guy stayed up all night to figure out how to make perfect and undo it and make it unreliable and fast and. Um, I was on the way to the machine shop to get the engine honed out and get, order new rings and pistons and I decided, you know, why not put the head on backwards? So <laughs> No problem, right? It seemed like a bright idea at the time, <laughs> right? And uh, I had five H22s in different states of disarray sitting around in the garage. Whoa. And I decided I have enough parts to make a few mistakes. <laughs> and. Um, and I did. I used all five H22s. <laughs> and I did. Yeah. <clears throat> so five motors to create one. Yes, sir. And do a reverse head. Oh, that's interesting. And we tried to blow it on the dyno and it wouldn't blow it. So nice. I figured it was reliable and that was, uh, I think it's been eight years since we put the last engine in it. Whoa. And this one has not died. Although I will say it's, it's, it's coming to its last legs. It's ready for a rebuild. Um, I think the head gasket has a slight leak that seals itself once it gets hot. Okay. Because I'm getting just enough oil in the coolant to let me know that it's it needs work. But it makes power and it doesn't overheat and I can drive it as hard as I want and it won't give up on me. That's awesome. Now, you did mention this is the second body. So yes. tell us a little bit about that. I know the history, but tell us a little bit about um, how now we end up with this um, the heart's still the original, the doors are the original, but a different vent. So tell us a little about that backstory. Okay, so at some point I ran into the guys from the Honda Accord meet, right? And they, had, which are now the Accord Collective. And um, I never thought I'd be such a bunch of nice guys. Don't lie, um, I know those guys. <laughs> those guys are nice guys. <laughs> <laughs> for, for guys to do what they did, I mean, they they invited me into the community because it's, you know, 
not only the nice guys, but it, it goes with the Accord thing because it's right. basically a, an Accord with a hatchback on it. Yeah. And um, at some point, I just started, I just started running out of money for this whole project. I had too many projects going on. This thing needed smog every two years, and you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. And um, I know the my buddy Daniel, who started WordWorks, his business. Uh, Daniel was asking me about, you know, let's let's reproduce the stick shift kit. Let's, and I said, no, I have no more materials. I have no more fabricators. He goes, no, no, we'll take care of that. And so I left the van at his house so they could reverse engineer it and maybe produce something nicer than what I did. Because what I did was never really nice enough for the community. It was just to make it work. Yeah. And um, they did exactly that. And the van ended up staying at Daniel's house for two years. And I, I kept calling. I felt bad. I said, Daniel, you want me to come pick this thing up? There's a of space in your driveway. And, and, you know, I'm not doing anything with it. And, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. So I, I was hoping that he was using it to make parts. And in the end, I finally told him, I said, look, dude, it, I can't afford this thing anymore. If you want to part it out, it's cool. You know, I'll sell you the engine for real cheap because I know you like it. And, um, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, well, we'll talk about it later. He kept kind of putting me off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the heck, dude, this guy want his driveway back? Right. And uh, I sold the Boogan kit that was on it originally to uh, DJ. And um, I told the guys some of the stuff I liked. Like, I wanted to put the PCI skirts on it. I kind of wanted to give it the kind of a DC, uh, JGTC race car look. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of just toying with the idea, and I said, like, yeah, screw it, just, just part it out. And um, little, did I know, little did I know they conspired with my wife to build another van with another van. It's amazing. Yeah, so they, they went out and bought another Odyssey, another white Odyssey. White van, yeah. And they stripped both of them down. Like, Ralph, Ralph is a stickler for details. I, I saw, I didn't realize the gravity of what they'd done, so I saw pictures of Ralph with this van stripped down to a unibody, steam cleaning all the grossness out of it to make it a new van again before they put new carpet back in it. And it wasn't until I saw the photographs that I realized how jacked up my old van was. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had spilled oil in there. My kids had thrown up in it. <laughs> you name it, dude. It was a daily, yeah. Yeah, it was trash. It was trash when I got it. There was... <laughs> <laughs> then you made it a little bit worse, but faster. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, there was wires hanging out from under the dashboard. I mean, you'd see the ECU sitting there. It was just, it was garbage. But it worked. It was just a science experiment. And these guys made it into something nice. And there was a lot of hands that went into it. I can't even think of all the names that that went into it now but I, I gotta I gotta say something about Daniel and Ralph right because Ralph was the reason the van didn't smell like socks <laughs> right he went through this whole thing and cleaned it and Daniel for him to reverse engineer what I had put into it I mean it, it took me I think three months to mine hump this thing long enough to figure out how I was gonna do it and then when I did put it together it was the wiring was a mess it was just enough to make it work there was two harnesses that came out of the firewall that came together to make the engine work and I, I can't even imagine what Daniel put himself through trying to reverse engineer that and make it into one nice harness. So, especially trying to meet a deadline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that too. And, and he did it with no sleep. Um, all right, so Mr. Tommy, so tell us what do we got going on in the front end? The front bumper is from, I believe, a '98 Odyssey, and I think of Ralph. One of the guys hand carried this piece back from Japan. Like they went to Japan and got this piece. Oh wow! Yeah, I was. <laughs> pretty impressed with what they went through to get it um i like this bumper better than the other one because it's got a cleaner grill on it and this somewhat matches the um the moldings on the side of the van mm -hmm. uh the mugen grill is from the original kit that i had on the first van and um they i think they pulled the hood and the grill just off the first one and just stuck it on here and that's fine i like i like this grill a lot better than the stock one this is the one piece i'm glad they kept okay. um the I fenders they gave me with the van but they weren't on it originally they are Japanese fenders. They already had the side markers cut out. Oh, okay. And they sat in my yard for a year before I put them on. And typical gearhead stuff. And um, the wipers have been taken off for a cleaner look. Although I'll probably put them back on for the winter season now that I'm driving the van every day. The, the van's pretty stock when it comes to the body. There's not a whole lot of mods on it. I like the clean lines of a Honda with slight accents. And that's, yeah, that's how it looks. So I know that one of the jokes was that um, they... they tried to take the window visors off from your old van to put them into the, uh, the new cleaner van yeah but everybody was too scared they're just on them so nobody wanted to break them because to find those pieces is yeah. near impossible so they just legit just took the entire door from the old van and bolted yeah. them up on this one and so you said you want to go with the pci side skirts mm -hmm. um i figured if i was going to keep it i was going to go for more of a a streetable race look and the the pci fenders were my thing but they weren't quite long enough and I just, I was so, 
frustrated with trying to find fabricators that could do something for a reasonable price and or something that could do something reliably if anything that was more of it more of it than anything then I just gave given up on the whole project yeah. and Daniel had a metal fabricator and he added six inches to the, the PCI skirts oh wow well, as, uh, you said more of a streetable race car kind of thing mm -hmm. so what kind of suspension is it on and uh, if you can tell us your wheel and tire setup okay suspension is Tain coilovers in the front it meant they're a stock Odyssey kit and originally I had the entire kit, but the Tane kit for the Odyssey, the springs were too soft in the back, so the back would bottom out. And if you had people in the back, the back would drag. Yeah. So at some point I had taken the springs out of the back and sent them out to Blue Coil and had a custom set made. I told them to add 450 pounds of carrying capacity, but I wanted the same ride height. And it rode like a dream, it was perfect. I mm -hmm. uh, handed those springs off to another gentleman who had a Blue Odyssey. And at the time I was working with the guys over at Megan Racing to get prototypes made for the 2007 Odyssey and for this one. And the original setup they gave me for this one, the front end slammed all the way down, put the van at stock ride height. They didn't wow. do it the way I, I told them to do it. Disappointing. Yeah, so I took those out and put the tains back in, but the ones they made for the rear were perfect. They almost matched the blue coils I made perfectly. So the, the, um, the ones from Megan Racing are still in the back. The ones from Tain are still in the front. Uh, tell us a little bit about your wheel and tire setup. Uh, 17 by 9 Racing Heart Type C's and Toyo 23540 17's and that's I went through a few different tire combos for this but this is the one that ultimately works better I'm not really into the stretch look I like more of the functional look and it looks somewhat OEM as far as the tires are concerned and also these are the only rims that I have that will clear the big brakes that the guys have put on for me So, and those um, are calipers made by Woodworks Yep, WordWorks modified RL calipers, and I love them. I think they're awesome. That's something I wanted to do, but just couldn't do, didn't have the money for it. And he went a step above and beyond, and he personalized them. With... He did. Everybody in the Army called me Sergeant Fitz because my last name is long, Sergeant Fitz Given. So. Um, <laughs> and also, I worked at a youth challenge academy as a drill sergeant for teenage youth. Cat, teenage youth. And um, everybody there called me Sergeant Fitz. And some of the kids who graduated or are now in their 20s still call me that. Wow. So kind of a term of endearment, I guess. All right, so the, the seats are from a Supermark II, and they looked like crap when I got them. They're all full of holes and tattered up, and I had my neighbor do some upholstery work on them, and it's all the microfiber stuff, and it turned out really nice. They, they're they really comfortable seats. They got the adjustable leg bolsters. Sorry, they're filthy. They see action every day. And um, they've been in here for probably, yeah, they've been in here for nine years. Wow. They're awesome seats. Steering wheel is an old Momo. Uh, I got that from Mike Essa, the guy who won D1 a few times. He's one of my buddies from way back in the day. He's a cool guy. And um, it's, just, it's just an old beat-up Momo, and it works great for the, for the application. It's sitting on an HKB, an HKB steering hub with a, the with a detachable, what's that company called? Uh, snap-off. It's got a snap-off steering lock on it, the one that utilizes a barrel key. And... Um, I do want to do more to it. The, the only thing that the dash is good for is telling me if there's fuel in it and if it's overheating. So <laughs> eventually I'd like to put in a digital dash so I can actually see the RPM mm -hmm. and not have a but I guess I, I like gauges and all, but I don't want 15 gauges sitting on top of this thing with wires going everywhere. So I think eventually, I think with all the new tech out, I'm just going to put a digital dash into it and plug it into the AEM computer and save a lot of space. And I want it to look OEM too. So I think that would be pretty cool. Um, other than that, the interior is mostly stock. All right, Tommy. So uh, tell us, what are we staring at? Uh, one of my nightmares coming into fruition. <laughs> so this is H22 number. I should say four and a half rather than five because I rebuilt this one out of one of the old ones. Um, so the head is obviously reversed. We had to weld a plate right here and pull out the, the two cooling plugs that were originally on this side of the head. So that way we could get coolant in here for the main radiator hoses and the thermostat housing. Now, orig my original plans were I was gonna run it with a distributor, which is why the adapter piece is shaped like this. But the reason I did not was because the third ear of the distributor wouldn't occupy the same space as the thermostat housing. So we went with the, um, the AEM engine positioning module by out of necessity. And it's probably for the better because it makes it for a cleaner setup. And the, the coil packs, they put out a lot more power than the old distributors do. Um, where it gets complicated, it was the, it was the, uh, the VTEC system. 
with the head reversed, nothing lines up to where it's supposed to be. Now, if, obviously, if the head was this way, the way the VTEC works is it comes in and it goes into the head like a fork and then splits out between the two cams. So basically, I cut the handle off the fork and just made it go through one cam, make a U-turn and go back through the other. So what happens is this aluminum block here simulates the portion of the head that the VTEC solenoid was once mounted on. So the way I had this drilled out was this line right here and another line just below it are the VTEC oil return lines. When the engine does not have the VTEC engaged, the oil goes through here and just dumps back into the head and drains back into the pan. When the VTEC engages, this blocks off these two lines and puts oil through this line. It goes into the inlet cam, into the intake cam, races through the head, makes a U-turn over here, right by where the VTEC solenoid used to be, comes over here and goes in the exhaust cam and engages both VTEC solenoids, or both sets of lobes for the, for the engine. So the VTEC works just like it was supposed to from the factory and just everything's exposed. So this line right here actually feeds the VTEC system and this is what puts, where it puts out. And for the, camp, for the lubrication for the cams themselves, I plumbed that outside the head and that's this line right here. To figure all of it out, I had to pull all these little plugs and everything out of the head and see how all the plumbing worked, what size all the ports were, and how I could get the same result, the same desired result that Honda got and make it all work without it being, without it going through the bottom of the head from the deck like it originally did. Uh, throttle bodies are 50 millimeter TWM, which is way too big for the street, which, <laughs> which is why the throttle response down low is pretty bad. I mean, they, these things really don't do a whole lot until you get up to about, I'm guessing four or 5,000 RPM if you don't have a tack on it. And uh, well, I mean, when you get higher up in the RPM range, this thing really screams, it'll move. But, you know, getting it off the line and scooting around the city, it's just kind of a gentle ordeal. So, not real fast on the bottom end, but screams on the top end. Uh, Radiator is a custom unit made by a company called Performance Rod and Custom. I think they're back in the Midwest somewhere. And because this doesn't have any accommodations for a, um, a cam breather, I kind of had to put one in. So it's kind of filthy right now because it's got a little, a little bit of blow by. The rings are shot in this thing. It's ready, for, it's ready for a rebuild. The valve cover is cool. This is original valve cover off of a, a British Super Touring Accord. Whoa. I got it from the guys who made the head gasket at Neil Brown Engineering in England. They had one left. And I asked them how much. They, I think they quoted me 600 bucks or something. I said, sold. I'll buy it. <laughs> so I bought that in the head gasket. And uh, the head gaskets for this thing are made for the reverse cylinder head by Neil Brown Engineering. And to get one over here, you're looking at about 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. And 150 of that is for shipping because it shows up two days after you get it. They only ship one way. The header was made by Beto from B Works. He's out in Fontana. He's a hell of a fabricator. And um, he was the only guy who would do it, and he did it for a pretty reasonable price. And he, he worked his magic when we couldn't figure out how to get the exhaust out of the engine. He routed it high up and over to clear the steering rack and the rear engine mounts and all the other contraptions we got back there. And it worked like a champ. Uh, lately, I've been getting a lot, of, a lot of hot exhaust gases. I'm not sure why it got hotter but I started melting stuff. As you can see right here, it started melting the brake reservoir. So I had to make a heat shield recently and put some reflective tape on it just to save everything. It's like figure out how to get those exhaust temps down. It, ultimately, this thing needs to be rebuilt and put back on the dyno. Um, transmission has been rebuilt. It now has a 5.1 final drive and a torque biasing torsion differential from M Factory. It makes it into a different vehicle. It accelerates better. It accelerates harder. It it um it'll come around the corners and, and pull real hard in the corners. It's just way more fun to drive like that. Way more stable, and it's very smooth too. It's no strange noises or ratcheting sounds from a funky LSD. You don't even have to use any special oils. Just use this regular Honda Transit transmission oil. Oh, wow, that's cool. Um, uh, the guys over at uh, Wordworks they made this really cool. This really cool uh, strut tower base for me, and they even put my old logo on there, Fast Eddie's Racing, FUR Performance. And um, these, they put the extension, the tower extensions for the shocks on here. Originally, I had a set of homemade ones front and back, 
and that was that was fun because my the first set I made I made them too long I did all this math and I <laughs> <laughs> I over engineered the idea and I was thinking well if I lower the van two inches and I make this I make this um, the extensions four inches then it, they don't have all kinds of travel in the shocks and you know and then, it won't, then the wheel won't drop too much well I went two inches too high so <laughs> I took it for the, the most harrowing test drive I've ever been on because every time I hit the slightest bump in, in the street the suspension would compress and then when it decompressed it would lift the back end of the van off the ground it would That's hop sketchy so yeah I was hopping all over the street and I couldn't wait to get it home it was the scariest 10 minutes I've ever had <laughs> so I, I got home and hacked the old towers and and then uh the guys when they rebuilt the van they made these beautiful aluminum ones and they also made those um those aluminum block off plates on the on the firewall right here and here and that's from uh, Fat Ford Customs. Yeah, uh, Fat company. Ford Customs. Those guys really, those guys really took the ball and ran with it. They did a great job. Um, here, I used to have a wiring harness coming out of here, and another wiring harness coming out over there, and it, it looped around over here, and did a whole bunch of stuff and made everything work, and it became Daniel's worst nightmare when he had to rebuild this thing. <laughs> I, I really felt bad for the guy when he told me what he had went through, and. Um, it, it works like a champ now, and it, he, he really cleaned it up. Before, there was just wires going everywhere. I had an adjustable brake booster just kind of hanging out here that wasn't mounted properly. <laughs> it, was, um, it was actually an adjustable brake proportioning valve, a Willwood one. And as you can see, you, this is the, the Willwood master cylinder down here for the clutch. And this is the clutch line right here. So it all works like stock. It shifts and works just like a regular stock Honda. And um, I, got the, I used uh, BZ Moto cam gears. And I like those ones because they actually lock when you tighten them down. I've had cam gears slip before and destroy engines. So that's, oh. yeah, these, when he, when he came out with these, that was, you know, that's something I knew I was going to have to have for this engine. But even these had to be modified. So before I put those on, the, we, had to, we had to go do smaller cam seals to make the cams fit in the, in the cylinder head backwards when we machined everything. And we had to take the, the stem on the back of the cam gears and put it in the lathe and machine it down probably about a quarter of an inch all the way around and uh, just so it, the, the cam gears actually fit inside the edge of the cylinder head so there's a lot of uh, a lot of engineering and trial and error and I should say reverse engineering since I didn't design this thing but yeah. it um but yeah we finally made it work it's running 450 cc injectors which is enough for throttle bodies for the amount of power it's making the original the original idea for this engine was to see if it would work and then put high comp pistons good set of street cams in it and call it a day. And by the time I got to engine number four and a half, <laughs> I had spent so much money. I was just grateful that it worked with stock parts. And I didn't want to destroy any more racing parts if I had, if I had um, blown another engine. So yeah, the, state, the status that it is now is what it's been for nine years. It's basically a stock H22 that's been balanced and knife edged, has throttle bodies and a header. There's nothing special about it for it to make any power. Reversing the head makes absolutely no power. It was just to see if I can do it. Shout outs, man, that's a long list, you know. First, you know, Fast Eddie, because he's my partner and he taught me a lot, taught me how to drive, taught me how to build these cars when I had nothing, you know, with what parts we had laying around. We did some amazing things in the driveway. And uh, he's been my, my good buddy since 97 when I met him on the autocross track, and he still is. And uh, I'm never gonna forget everything that he's shown me. Also, all my friends in the industry i mean i can't think of all of them there's so many i'm just going to go back to where everything started there was my buddies from kamikaze racing we were all in the army together except for a couple we were all living in texas at the time and we did what we did back when we were all hated for doing it and we were all from cali we had a good time this goes out to nate duenas and his brother and the rest of the family that we all hung out with back when we were lowering cars by cutting springs and putting racing stripes on them <laughs> so those were good times uh, all my other buddies, you know, Brian, Monkey, 
You know, there, there's so many guys, I, I can't even name them all. Everybody put a hand on this van included, Ralph, all the boys from the collective, Alan, Daniel, um, props to my dad, you know, he was one of the greatest aerospace engineers who ever lived and I learned how to think mechanically because of him and I'll never forget all the things he taught me, all the good values and uh, pretty much to every teacher, all my mentors, everybody who read, wrote the books that I read, you know, all these things. Oscar Jackson himself from Jackson Racing. When I first met him, I was just a young kid in the army and he literally walked out of the machine shop and took 45 minutes of his time to sit down and talk to me and tell me about the industry. And in that 45 minutes, I learned more from him than I did from most of the magazines I've been reading for a few years. He's an amazing guy. And he, one of the greatest things about his gift is his ability to share it with others. So yeah, props out to him. Uh, for To Aaron Bonk from you know, Honda Tuning Magazine. Aaron's the one who kind of put us on the map. You know, he's, he's the guy who looked at my van when there was wires and stuff hanging out of it and it still looked like a bucket and goes, you clean that up and I'll make you famous. And I said, all right. And uh, that was really cool. You know, Ken Miyoshi, who invented Import Show Off, he's another cool guy who gave me the time of day and looked at some of my old photographs from the old racing days and shared memories with me. Another cool guy. Big one to Steve Rogers and Mitch Peterson, the two guys who brought the van to life when this thing would have been nothing but a lawn ornament. Steve and Mitch can, they're, they're the ones who've been taking my projects and making them run. I could build all kinds of stuff, but they make my stuff run. They animate my stuff. So props to those guys. Steve Rogers owns Dynasty Motor Works, which is out there in Canyon Country. He's an amazing tuner. He can, that guy can tune anything. I mean, he's the one who made my Mercedes run on Honda EFI. So props to Steve, he's a great guy. He gave me all kinds of his time when I first met him to help me get my Civic running right and asked me for pennies in return. So. I'll never forget the guy, and that's how we ended up being really good friends too. And um, props to my wife for putting up with my crap for so many years, and also for being a gearhead and you know putting up with our both of our gearhead tendencies. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, Tommy, it's been a pleasure. Amazing morning. A uh, privilege to share it. No, oh, thank you, thank you for an amazing time. Um, this van and your story is way more than I anticipated and I have very high expectations. So once again, thank you so much for making the time for us. And um, man, please keep this car on the road. Will do. Thank you. Not on it.